The Frank Haith Show, brought to you by Don Thornton Cadillac, Pepsi, River Spirit, TTCU, The Credit Union, and St. Francis Health System. And now your host, Bruce Howard. Hello again, everybody, and we welcome you to the Frank Haith Show. I'm Bruce Howard, as we're joined by the head coach of the Golden Hurricane, Frank Haith. And boy, you guys are on a roll, six in a row. What a terrific game. What a terrific, terrific atmosphere it was on Saturday. It was. Uh, really proud of, uh, you know, our, our fan base and, and them coming out and, and supporting his team. Um, uh, but a great week. They start off with a great win in Hartford against a UConn team. I think is very talented, very dangerous on their floor. And they had, had three tough games prior to our game where they went down the wire against top uh, 25 type caliber teams. And then uh, and then we come in here and have the, the great match against uh, Wichita State. Yeah, outstanding. Second time Tulsa has beat a ranked team at the Reynolds Center. And we'll be back with all the highlights of Tulsa upending Wichita State in a moment. Welcome back to the Frank Haith Show. And Coach, you get ready to take on number 22, Wichita State. What are your concerns as you get ready to take on such a good team? Well, first of all, you know, I'm just worried about their, their you know, they had a week off just like us. Yeah. And they were going to be ready to play. Um, and uh, they're, they're physical. And that we just had to master physicality. And a situation where you had two of the best defensive teams in the league as well. So you knew it was going to kind of be a rock fight, right? Yeah, if we were on our point defensively, I knew they would be on their point because we had the time to scout each other. And it looked like that, particularly throughout the whole game. But just that first part of the game was really tough. Tulsa coming in at six and one, and Wichita State just behind TU in the standings at five and two. Looking at the highlights now, and uh, Coach, one of the things that you did, which I thought was terrific, uh, the tragedy of course, course with uh, Kobe Bryant and the other eight that lost their lives. You had a special T-shirt. We did. We had that done for our guys right before the game, and uh, just wanted to pay pay tribute to an icon, and it stuck all of basketball community. No question about it. Jariah Horn hits a three early for you. And then Martin Zigbanu, deep, deep position. Yeah, that, that's a good execution, uh, ducking in when that ball's away. You have a chance to make play a heck of a block by Lies right there, going back and, and playing the play through and taking away two points. Uh, and then we get in transition, and, and obviously Lawson knocks down this three. Brought rain, I think, that three-pointer as he knocked that in, and the Hurricane uh, down 14 to 10 at this point. Here's a good replay of that. Yeah, you see Lies is just going to get that, and then uh, Obviously, uh, we talked about the hierarchy shot there by, by Lawson. As Coach would mention later on, this would be Eli's day as a great assist to Horn. Nice look away and dry running the pike. Uh, good defense there is Eli with the steal. And a uh, good throw out to Darian, uh, and he misses it, but then uh, Brandon follows that up. Brandon Rochelle with the follow dunk, and uh, you know the interesting part was this would be Brandon's only basket of the game, and yet everybody else filled in, didn't they? Yeah, he knew they were going to be focused on stopping him and Jirai, and, and they did a great job on Brandon, made it tough on him, and we just needed other guys to step up, and there's another guy to step up, and Darren Jackson driving the ball and finishing on the other side of the rim. Makes it a two-point game, and now Tulsa gets their first lead. Nice shot by Elijah. He'd been working in the gym so hard with his jump shot, hadn't been shooting it well. And uh, he shot that with confidence and uh, with rhythm. And the other thing he does so well, he elevates on that, doesn't he? He does. He shoots a jump shot. And uh, there's, there he is again, getting another, another three-point shot and stepping into it with some confidence. Late in the first half, though, Wichita State with a little bit of a run, and they would end up uh, leading you by six at halftime. And there you see the numbers, 29-23 at that point. What are the things that, that concern you? Obviously, your shooting percentage is not where you want it. Yeah, offensively, we, <clears throat> we're struggling uh, shooting the ball. Um, you know, but we knew we had to keep pounding and keep grinding. It was going to be that kind of game. You know, Jaime scores there at the end, uh, Etienne, and um, he had 13 and a half. We were concerned about shutting him down in the second half. Still playing good defense, though, as uh, Wichita State was under 40% in the first half. And there you go. Good start to the second half, Coach. Yeah, nice transition uh, execution there. Eli knocks down a three. This is great execution here in the out-of-bounds play with the back cut. We out of our timeout. A good finish. And the Hurricane cutting the lead to two at, the, at that point. Now it's back up to six after a three-pointer made by Wichita State. But again, he, Elijah Joyner makes a play for you. Yeah, you know, good spacing so he had room to go make a play. And it was going to be that kind of game. You had to go make plays. I mean, they were going to guard your actions, but you had to go make a play. 
Elijah Joyner got the rebound on this play, so this was a coast-to-coast -coast play, wasn't it? Yes, right after he just scored that bucket, and then and I think we went back up and took the lead right there. Yep, Tulsa up 39-38 at that point. And now you see the Hurricane up by one, and you get your largest lead at this point, three. Yeah, nice attack by Martins uh, off a mid-post catch uh, going right to the rim. This one went back and forth for quite a while here in the second half. Echenique with the basket to give the, the Shockers a lead. And that was his only bucket there in the second half. We did a real, much better job on him. And moments later, Elijah Joyner knocks down another one. He might have gotten, speaking of knockdown, he might have gotten knocked down on that play and fouled, but no call. You'll take the three, though. We'll take it, and we're up. We take the lead there about two, a four, four, little bit over four minutes left to go in the game. And uh, we needed some defensive stops here and, and some good execution on offense. And, boy, this is a... Great pass by drive and, and, and an unbelievable finish by Darren after, uh, after a timeout. Darian Jackson with that huge finish. For a moment, it looked like it might be a, a turnover, but boy, he came from nowhere to, to make the play. Terrific play. Yeah, nice, nice pass, nice finish. And so again, this game goes back and forth with TU up by one. Stevenson will cut and make a basket. He's their leading scorer, but did not score well in this game. And he got the and one there, missed the free throw, and now here you go, and Darian Jackson draws the foul. Draws the foul, being aggressive, attacking the rim, makes one of two right there, uh, ties the game back up. It was 49-49 at that point, and a uh, tough shot, but he made it. Burton making yeah. the basket to give them the lead. Good execution right here by Darren, nice pass, and uh, Marty, way to go to the rim, and then he's, he goes to the line, steps to the line, makes these two big free throws. Yeah, 43 seconds to go and he makes them both to tie the game up. Now you can play defense at 51-51, right? Yeah, and we, 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 we went man, and, and actually the last two or three minutes here we were man-to-man -man and, and uh, did a great job. Watch Brandon here cut off Burton, but Darren's right there to step in and make a play. Just that little bit right there, then the Eli on the seal down, uh, they don't get a shot off. Yeah, and so the shot clock buzzer goes off, and now you have 3.3 seconds to go. With good execution, we send Dry over the top. Elijah sets a back cut, back screen for Marty. They switch, and uh, then he gets the attack. And I just, you know, Marty was the first option. Eli was the second option. And told him to go make a play, and he went and made a play. 3.3 seconds from basically top of the key to top of the key to make that shot. It's, uh, it, it was just in the nick of time. There was 0.1 seconds remaining when the ball was clearly uh, leaving his hands. So it was no question it was good. What great emotion, huh? Yeah, just a tremendous shot by Eli and, and, uh, and our bench and just excitement and excitement in the building and uh, just a great play. So in case you're wondering how far you can go in 3.3 seconds, there it is right there, top of the key to top of the key. What a great celebration, huh? Well, really, really happy for our university and our players and the program. And obviously, this was an outstanding win. You look at the numbers there defensively, we were outstanding. We were terrific again. Uh, holding him to 34% and 19% from three, which continues to get we doing a good job guarding that three-point line. Well, especially in the second half, they're 31-22. You outscore the Shockers and the Golden Hurricane winning to get into first place in the American Athletic Conference now at 7-1, and 15-6 and six overall. And this week becomes even busier. Two games for the Hurricane coming up. We'll be back with more in a moment on the Frank Haith Show. At last possession, we had all five guys battling in there. Battling in there, okay? Find a way to do something to help us win. That's what it takes. And listen, today, my man, Eli, has a game, right? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Our strength is in numbers. It's in the numbers. Who cares who gets it done as long as we get it done? Exactly. That's it. That's all it boils down to. So we got to go into every game. It doesn't matter. It may be somebody else's day. That's the kind of team we got. As soon as we embrace that, boy, the sky's the limit, baby. Yes, the sky's the limit. Great job, man. Waits. He has the ball. Here we go. Inbounds pass. Rochelle waiting, waiting, pitching it to Joyner. Joyner dribbling it up court. He's at the top of the key. Fires a shot at the buzzer. Good! And it counts! Joyner just hit a three to win the game for Tulsa. Holy smokes! At half court, he caught the ball, he turned, he angled to the right, and he made a three-pointer at the buzzer. Elijah <laughs> Joyner! I honestly never pictured this moment with my, my father being here for the first time, and I'm just so happy that he was here. 
for this moment. It means so much for me to see him in the crowd. It just means a lot to me knowing that he was here and that I could do this in this special moment. I never pictured this. I never pictured them being in the crowd, you know, cheering me on and things like that this far in my life. But he's here, and I'm just so happy that he's here. Well, Coach, you've been involved in a lot of press conferences and a lot of emotion. I mean, it's right. pretty raw right after game. Right. Anything right. top of that? No, that was a special moment and uh, for, for, the, for this young man in terms of just having his father there to be there and never underestimate the value of a father in someone's yeah. life and just being there for him and he never visualized that because their relationship was growing over the years in the recruiting process. I didn't spend a lot of time with his father, but uh, I know he, he definitely embraced it and now is loving the fact that his father is now part of it. And uh, that was a special moment for him. Absolutely, real special moment for Elijah Joyner and for the TU basketball family. Speaking of a special moment, this doesn't happen very often. In fact, only one time in University of Tulsa history has been there been a triple-double. It came 20 years ago. Let's take a look back at Eric Coley. By the sixth game of the 1999-2000 TU basketball season, the Hurricane was already 5-0 and had two big road victories. In early December, UAB came to Tulsa for a non-league game at the Reynolds Center. Eric Coley had been a big-time contributor for three and a half years for TU and would be destined to become the all-time leader in steals for Tulsa. But this night was special. Coley would make Hurricane history that evening, and here there's a trap, a steal, and Eric takes takes it down for a one-hand slam dunk. Later on in the first half, Coley goes back door. He misses the shot, but he gets his own rebound, and he scores, and the Hurricane up by 12. As Tulsa swings the ball around the UAB defense, Coley feeds Greg Harrington, who nails the three-pointer, and Tulsa's up by 19. UAB cut the lead down to 10, but Coley was there again, hitting this jump shot. Eric Coley picks up another assist here as he whips the pass inside to Brandon Kurtz. Kurtz able to score and TU is back up by double digits. Coley was so good at creating turnovers and turning them into points. A steal, a run out, a two on one and then a lob lay in and TU is back up by 15. At this point Coley had 11 points, 10 assists and 9 rebounds. Swanson ahead into the left corner to Reed, fires a three pointer, back rim no good and the rebound Eric Coley comes up with a rebound. Eric Coley got his 10th rebound, the first triple-double in TU history. As soon as the ball went out of bounds, Coach Bill Self took him out of the game and loads of congratulations for TU's first ever triple-double. 11 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. And as you look at the score sheet, you can see that historic stat line. But what's really more remarkable is that Eric was only two steals away from a quadruple-double. Had he gotten those two more steals, it would have been the first quadruple-double ever in NCAA history. There's been one and only one in NCAA men's basketball since. Coley, of course, would be a catalyst in TU's magical run to the Elite Eight in year 2000. Waits. He has the ball. Here we go. Inbounds pass. Rochelle waiting, waiting, pitching it to Joyner. Joyner dribbling it up court. He's at the top of the key. Fires a shot at the buzzer. Good! And it counts! Joyner just hit a three to win the game for Tulsa! Holy smokes! At half court, he caught the ball, he turned, he angled to the right, and he made a three-pointer at the buzzer. Elijah <laughs> Joyner! We're back on the Frank Haith Show. We just had a little bit of a historic piece. Speaking of history, you have an assistant coach that has a history here at the University of Tulsa, Kwanzaa Johnson, coming back for his second stint as an assistant coach. And he's been awesome. You know, I, I, I knew Kwanzaa a little bit, just be around the profession. But since he's been back with us, his impact has been incredible in terms of how he is with our players, how he does with scouting. He's been a, a, a big time help uh, with our development. Absolutely. Kwanzaa Johnson was part of the University of Tulsa run for a couple of Sweet 16s in the 90s, and now he's a TU assistant coach. Here's a closer look at Kwanzaa Johnson, up close and personal. Well, you know, the way I got back to University of Tulsa was uh, I was introduced to Coach Haith through Shea. And uh, Coach Haith and I knew each other, but didn't really know each other. And Shea kind of helped bridge the gap a little bit, so I'm very appreciative to him. And then I just kind of felt like, you know, I also had some unfinished business here at the University of Tulsa to take care of. 
and just wanted to get back home and help my program. I'm a much better assistant coach right now than I was uh, before. Some of the things that I've learned have to do a lot with just experience. You know, when I was here before, I had basically been an assistant coach for two years, and now I'm in my 19th or 20th year. So probably the main thing is experience, and you just see a lot. So I have a lot of different experiences to draw from. It means the world to me to be able to come back and coach at the University of Tulsa. It's almost a second home to me. Being from Oklahoma City, I spent a lot of time in Tulsa once I came up here and played. Met my wife here, uh, had one of my children here, so it's just a wonderful place. It feels like home and it's good to be back. Well, Bruce, you know, I've been fortunate to work with uh, head coaches that let me stick my hands in a lot of different areas and experience a lot of different things. In the past, I've worked with the bigger guys, I worked with the guards, you know. I um, spent a lot of time working with defense. I feel like I'm pretty strong defensively. and. Uh, you know, it's just been a good situation here, but I think in basketball, which is different than some other sports, you have to be able to play on both ends of the floor. So you got to be able to coach both ends of the floor. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's been a good situation, but I think defensively, I'm probably pretty, that's probably where I'm a little bit more comfortable. You know, Bruce, Tulsa does feel like home to me. We've um, been on both coasts, like you said, at the University of Nevada, Georgia, down at Texas at TCU. But there's no place like home, and Tulsa's a great place. It's a great program. You know, it's really grown uh, from changing conferences, just to all the resources that we have here now. And uh, it's just a great place. So I feel very comfortable. My family feels comfortable, and we just really appreciate the opportunity to come back. I think your experiences as a player helps, and my experiences have definitely helped. You know, um, you just kind of see different things. You draw up on your experiences as a player. You draw up on your experiences as a coach as well. And the game has changed where you have guys who shoot it, they post up, they have to handle the ball, they rebound, you know, they do a lot of different things, just kind of the way the game has evolved. So, yes, I definitely think that helps. So. Uh, you know what, I think, I think the law degree kind of helped me think critically. You know, I think it's probably one of the most practical degrees out there. The one thing I realized when I was in law school is that just about every course that I took you could apply it to everyday life, you know, whether it's property law, there's some aspect of it that, you, that you're going to end up applying, you know, to, to your life as an adult, um, you know, torts and criminal law, which is stuff you don't want to have to apply to your everyday life, but, but it can come into, you know, it can come into play. Um, you know, constitutional law, all of it, all of it. And I thought I think it's one of the best degrees out there just because just because you have a law degree you can go into so many different areas because it prepares you to do so many different things. People don't know this about me, but I love sci-fi. Uh, my son and I sit up and watch all the Star Wars movies and I've convinced the rest of my family, my wife and my two daughters to become Star Wars geeks as well. So Every Star Wars movie, Star Wars Rebels, uh, the comics, uh, the Clone Wars, all of it. Love the Matrix series with Keanu Reeves. So people don't know that I love sci-fi movies. We're back on the Frank Cave Show. And Coach, after all the emotion, the great win on Saturday, uh, you have to level it off, I guess, right, and get ready for a Thursday game against a very capable UConn team right here at the Rental Center. Oh, yeah, and more than capable. I think they're, they're super talented, and you look at their schedule, um, their record doesn't tell you how good they are. Um, but we know we, we just played them, so we know how talented they are. And that game going over, over, overtime up in Hartford. And then, uh, so we got to be ready to play. We, we got to move on to the next one. We had a couple days off this week. We got to move on to to the next, uh, next opponent. Yeah, and you look at the table, you look at the standings, and boy, that's, that's nice. Seven and one in first place all alone, Coach. Uh, but it also means you kind of have, have a target on your back, huh? No question. It's a different feeling, right, when you go in those arenas than, than hunting, than being the one that's being hunted. And uh, we, we understand that. That's going to be um, a big week for us, coming off of what we've done so far, to continue to grow. All right, folks, we'll see you Thursday at the Rental Center with the Hurricane playing host to UConn. For the coach, I'm Bruce Howard. So long for now. The Frank Haith Show, brought to you by Don Thornton Cadillac, Pepsi, River Spirit, TTCU, The Credit Union, 
and St. Francis Health System. The Frank Haith Show has been a presentation of Golden Hurricane Sports Properties and a Kane Vision production.